Hey, now there's an idea. Hey, you know, we're making progress. <laughs> That is so All right. Funny. Hey, Georgia. Hey, Tim. Welcome, everybody, to a Results Now interview show. This is Jeff, and we're here on Blab. And my special guest right over is it, is it this way that points I'm at here. you? I'm over okay, here, right wherever here it is. I'm it's uh, Felicia Slattery. And we're going to talk about a notion we have. And this notion is that your business has a lifestyle. Okay? And so that's why the question is, does your business have a profitable lifestyle? You hear all the time on the internet about lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. You can get to hang out on the beach and make money and never work, which we know is not true. Um, but we got talking about the notion of a business lifestyle, and we have some notions about this we want to share with you. Uh, Felicia and I, we've known each other for what now? It's going on 10 years, isn't it? A, a long time, close yeah. Close to it. It's got to be close to 10. Felicia was one of my first um, mentor students way back in 07, 08, when I first went full time at this. And uh, it took me a good three years. To be able to pronounce her name, last name, correct. Three years. I still. I looked at the. I looked at what you wrote. I was like, did he spell it right this time? At least. To, well, I learned how to pronounce it. Now I, I still spell it wrong. It was. I always wanted to say say Slatter Lee, right? Yeah. Wasn't that what it? Slatter Lee. So, yep. in spite of my mispronunciation of her name, she took what we worked on and has done great with it. She's killing it with communication and speaking online. Um, and so, I wanted to have her in. And we're. This is really going to kind of be a. A brand new discussion between Felicia and I. We really haven't talked much about this, other than the idea. Want to do it in front of you guys, get your thoughts on it, and and see where this goes. We'll probably go, I don't know, 20, 30, maybe 40 minutes with this. Really kind of hard to tell, um, but mm -hmm. we're glad you're here. Be uh, feel free to tweet it and post it out there. It's called Tell a Little Bird, right, Felicia? Yes, Tell a Little Bird, or Tell your. It used to be Tell your aunt. And aunt, then it was you know. tell your friends, and All then right. now it's tell your, you know, now it's just tweet and post. And Facebook is tell your friends. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, so. Facebook used to be tell your aunt, A U A A U N T, because uh -huh. the kids at Blab, right. they, they're not on Facebook. The kids who like develop Blab, oh, they look okay. at Facebook as like where their aunt is and where their mom is, oh, and okay. some of them where their grandma is. Okay. So they're not on Facebook. Okay. All right. So for a long time, they weren't like, they didn't, they didn't, there wasn't even a, a Facebook button. They're wow. like, oh, nobody's wow. using Facebook. And then, you know, people like us came on and we were like, ah, uh, Facebook, TikTok, isn't million it, users, funny. billion. Yeah, yeah, just a few. It always interests me how um, arrogance, not the right word, but it's close. How how funny people get about platforms. Well, we're not going to do it over here, or we're not yeah. going. Or the one I love the most is, well, you're not supposed to mention anything for sale. Or try to make a profit on any of these things. Remember when blogging, when it was bad, to talk about an offer on blogging way back in the day, the bloggers were like, "Well, this is this is supposed to be pure," as if somehow <laughs> making money was impure, right? You know? so right. It's, that's, that's a whole. Not feeding your family was not a good yeah, notion. Yeah, feeding your family is impure somehow. Right. Well, if you Crazy. don't feed your family, they're going to end up looking like chubby. Oh, chubby. That would be good. Sidekick. And do you know? You, I didn't tell you this, Felicia. What? Effective yesterday, doing the, during the Results Now Cafe, Chubby now has his own Facebook page. Well, congratulations. Check, check, it, check it out on Facebook. We're going to have to applaud for yeah, Chubby. Yeah, Yay. absolutely. Give me some clap for Chubby. That's um, so funny. So, um, yeah, go to Facebook, folks, and type in Chubby the Skeleton, and he has his own Facebook page. I like him. He gets more attention for these things than I do. You know? That's so, so funny. Look at, see, there, see, there's Georgia. Um, yay chubby this is yay chubby that's right all right so tell us tell everybody how we got started talking about this whole notion of business lifestyle well you know i had you and jim on um i hosted you guys on a webinar a few weeks back now talking about the custom content wizard which was a very good and thing to do by the way i know you both you're both harmless um so <laughs> so I um, Jeff is just messing with his audio and video visual stuff he's so funny anyway so on the webinar they were talking and I don't remember if it was Jim or if it was Jeff but um, they were using because it was right after like it was the first week back to work after the new year after holidays and they were talking about like resolutions and um, and Jim said something I think it was Jim said something like you know if you don't 
work out, you're not going to get the results. And so if you're, if you don't do the things that you need to do in your business, you're not going to get the results. And I had like this huge, aha, yeah, like mind blowing, holy crap moment. And wait, 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 um, wait, wait, I like that. Well, give her, give her some claps for that. A mind blowing, holy crap moment. I did. That's huge. I like that. Well, which is unusual because I thank you very much, Georgia. Um, it's unusual because I talk to you guys all the time and I host you guys all the time and I learn from both of you guys. And so it was just the way that that you were talking about creating content on a regular basis that it was just another perspective. And I said, oh, my gosh. And I started to think, you know, about the things that I was doing in my life and my lifestyle. And I actually ended up, um, I wrote a blog post about it. I remember. And um, it's at FeliciaSlattery.com forward slash blog. It's the first post up there if you want to see it. Um, and so, you know, I wrote, like, if you're thinking about diet and exercise, and that's, that's really where this kind of, the idea came from, right? And being consistent. So, I over the years have tried different things and in early years I've been blessed to have pretty good genetics so I didn't really have to think too much about you know I'm gaining weight or not gaining weight then I had kids as I'm getting older metabolism changes things in the body change you know that whole story right so I and I sit on my butt pretty much all day in front of my computer for a living um, you know unless I'm out you know unless I'm out at a speaking event or um, at a networking event I'm sitting and that's my that's what I do for work and that's what a lot of us do for work and so over the years I've inched up inched up in my weight and I'm not comfortable with it and so I said alright well how am I gonna fix this and so I've tried different things over the years and of course because I don't stick with anything nothing has worked we, we and that's put when you on chubby diet I oh, he's, that, he's I, might, I may not need one. that I okay. may not need that Here's diet checking. Thank you, though, for checking, right? Um, but, you know, and so if you if you think about it, like if you work out sporadically or just like once a week, are you going to get the body that you want? Are you going to you know, uncover those six-pack abs that are under there? You just got to uncover them, right? <laughs> no, you're not going to do it once a week right. um, or sporadically. Like, well, I went, I went Monday and then I went the following – uh, not following Monday, but I went the following Thursday and then like that's not going to get you any kind of results, right? Or if you only eat healthy foods when you feel inspired to because you went to the right grocery store that day and they had some stuff on sale that looked pretty. Stumbled into Whole Foods, right? Right. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay. You know, maybe you had a good webinar that week. And so you got some extra dollars on your paycheck. I don't know. And you're thinking, hey, this would be a good day to buy some really healthy foods and then you work your way through those and the next thing you know you're sitting eating chips on the you know on the couch because it's 11 o'clock at night and you got the munchies like that's not going to get you optimal health right you've got to make health and exercise a part of just a healthy overall lifestyle if you want the best possible results for your body the same is true for your business your business actually has a lifestyle and that was my thought around this was that was the mind blowing oh my gosh just like you you and your life you have a lifestyle you and your business you have a lifestyle as well and are you treating it as healthfully as you can in terms of helping it build and helping it grow and helping it be as, as healthy right. as it right. can be or are you not are you sporadically going to the gym slash sporadically creating content whenever the whim hits you or you get an and, idea and for the key phrase there is sporadically because a couple of thoughts about what you're saying there's a a great commercial out right now where it wouldn't it be nice if you could eat one piece of broccoli and, and lose weight or do one push up yes and do well i mean that's a great notion of what we're talking about and here we are you know rapidly approaching the very end of january Okay. And like you're talking about with consistency, the friends of mine that work at our own health clubs absolutely love this time of year. Okay. It's when their membership goes up, people buy their um, their membership, they show up for two mm -hmm. or three days, mm -hmm. and then don't show up again, and, eat, and they keep their membership. I mean, it's great continuity if you want to look at it that way. It's not consistent. And so I've got a little bonus for you guys here. Okay, many Most people don't know this because I just – 
thought of the idea a few days ago, but everybody I presented it to loves this idea. Let's just look at, at January as like not really 2016, but like a test month. Okay, it was um, a, a starter month, a um, not a real month. It's just a test month. Okay, so mm -hmm. the real stuff starts starts today. But definitely Monday, February first. Tim likes that idea. Okay, and so the whole notion that we talked about on that webinar, and I think it's true with anything, is consistency. You know, just like eating mm -hmm. healthy is important. You can run and have some. Everybody's saying thank you for that idea. Um, you can run and go get Taco Hell, Taco Bell, or McDonald's once every six months if you want to. It's not going to hurt you. Okay, if you do that every day, it's going to hurt you. And the opposite of that is what you do in your business every day is what's going to help you. And so that whole notion of consistency. I remember back mm -hmm. in graduate school playing racquetball almost every day. It's one of the best shape of my life. And and you'd be going along just doing great and playing wonderfully. And then you'd mess up. And our phrase was like, consistency is the key, right, with anything else. And so for you, what have you found are the most consistent things to do on a daily basis in your business that makes it successful for you? Now you're asking me? Yes. Okay. Asking you, yes. <laughs> um, well, my blab show that I do on Tuesdays at noon Eastern, just had to put in a little plug, right. is called Creating oh, Connections. Oh, yeah, make it, make it a full entire plug here. A full entire Tuesday thing. Okay, so at Tuesdays at noon, you yes. You should an interview show. I do an interview show, yes. First half is interview. Second half, we let other folks come on and, and join in, ask questions and whatever. And it's called Creating Connections with Felicia Slattery because my whole life has been about effective communication. I've got a master's degree in communication. I have taught every communication class at multiple universities in the Chicago area that you could possibly teach. Public speaking being just one of them and is a very effective way of communicating a message, message and creating connections. The perspective that I take with public speaking is that you want to create a connection from the stage. You want to serve your audience from the stage. And if you look at a public speaking opportunity as the beginning of a conversation that you're going to continue on after that and use online marketing, content marketing, and so forth, then that's just the very, very beginning. That's just how somebody's going to introduce themselves to you, how you're going to introduce yourself to them. Shake hands, say hello, but you get to know them by building those connections. And so for me, the things that I've done that have been, um, that are real consistent, actually, I love doing my blab show now because it allows me to um, not just do blab because, I mean, as you can see from the number of folks right here, it's not like the heyday of teleseminars and webinars where we, you know, we had hundreds of people watching us. We've, we, don't, we don't have hundreds of people on blab just yet because it's a brand new right. platform. Building folks it aren't very familiar with it. Yeah. Exactly. But what it allows me to do, or anybody who uses Blab really, is it allows us to get the video, get the audio, download those. I can upload them immediately to YouTube. I can put them onto uh, in, in a blog post. I can embed it in blog post. I can make that audio into a podcast. I could, I mean, I can repurpose it in any number of different ways I've heard and of have that, that repurposing. Stuff. Yeah, right. I wonder where I learned that from. And it's, it just, that's really what has helped me as well as being very active on social media. I'm on social media to be social yeah, you are. specifically for my business. And yeah, I talk a lot about my family and yeah, I talk a lot about food and, you know, various other kinds of things because that's me being social, introducing myself to folks and connecting with them beyond just sending an email to my subscribers, which I also do. I email subs my subscribers anywhere from two to four or five times a week. Um, and then I do, I would say, I don't have like a regular weekly webinar on a certain day of the week, but um, I shouldn't say that. I do a regular webinar every Monday for my, for, for my, my paying clients. Um, and I call it Monday Momentum, and that's a 30-minute Q&A call. I do that. I've done that regularly for the last three, almost four years. 
Um, but in terms of free webinars, those I'll do usually one a week. Sometimes I, you know, sometimes I skip skip a week in between. Um, but doing regular kinds of of webinars and outreach like that, those are all things that have been very helpful for me. And then occasionally I go on my blog. So it's kind of like if we're thinking about like business lifestyle, it's kind of like you play racquetball all the time. But then maybe every once in a while you would mix it up and go for a walk, right? So for me, blogging is not my everyday thing. For me, blogging is, I'm going to mix it up a little. I'm going to write a blog post. Oh, that was nice. Excuse me. That's a ringtone, and I forgot to turn that thing off. Guilty is charged. <laughs> so That's what, okay. What you're talking about, though, is consistency. Consistency is key. Mm -hmm. And what I'm hearing are the things you do consistently are a racquetball every now and then, okay? Not racquetball. I mean blogging every now and then. Um, mm -hmm. But you're, you're on Facebook. You're on, you're on social media, okay? You're doing mm -hmm. a regular blab. You're mm -hmm. doing a regular uh, webinar with your, with your mm -hmm. clients, okay? And mm -hmm. that consistency is what puts you in front of people, and they come to know you. And consistency like that, I think, breeds connection, breeds um, breeds all kinds of good stuff. And so, folks, part of what we want you to think about is what do you do consistently? Okay? And it's not just for a week. It's over time. And there was a great analogy about this this morning. Uh, my older son, John, and I went to uh, Caleb, the younger son's school today, for an award ceremony for the a -Hall. Okay. It's a big joke in our family. Caleb's gotten one B so far in middle school. He's halfway through. And we joke with John about it because he also only got one B in middle school. That was his highest grade in middle school. Okay. So anyway, A honor roll. Uh, and what they talked about, and I noticed this when I walked in today, because we got there real early because back in sixth grade, you had to get there like 45 minutes before the ceremony to even get a seat. Okay. And we got there about 25 minutes early. We were standing in the back, but it used to be wall-to-wall -wall parents standing on the walls and everywhere. And there weren't as many kids there as there were in sixth grade. And they made a point about talking about that to the kids. Like, you can look around. There is attrition in seventh grade. Okay, Who's being inconsistent? And they said, next year when you guys are in this room, there'll be less people. Okay? So mm -hmm. that's consistency over a few years. Okay. So in a few moments, folks, we're going to ask you about some of your things that you do consistently every day. Uh, my students mm -hmm. know I call them DRGRs, Daily Revenue Generating Rituals. Okay. Mm -hmm. Things I do every day, no matter what, whether I feel like it or not, um, that bring in the prospects and bring in the profits. And that, that point about whether I feel like it or not is huge. A lot of it time, is huge. Is it, why, why do you say that's huge? We don't have a boss. I, I we don't know. have somebody standing over our shoulder saying, hey, did you get that done? Hey, did you get that done? When are you going to turn that in? What we, we need, or, or like um, one of our good friends um, took a job at a company. If he doesn't do his part when he needs to get it done by, there's a whole staff of people waiting to make the videos to promote the thing that he's teaching, to send emails out to promote the thing that he's teaching, to edit the thing that, that he's putting together. I mean, like, he's got this whole team of people behind him, which is awesome for him because he doesn't have to do it all himself, and he also doesn't have the luxury of saying, eh, I don't feel like doing that training today. I'll just... Yeah. I'll, I'll get to it tomorrow. Like, nope, because there's a whole bunch of people relying on exactly. it. Exactly. So he knows if he doesn't get it done, then they like he's letting down all these other people and productivity is not good. And, exactly. you know, he likes to be exactly. a member of a team, right? But we, you and I, we don't have that. I know. We have like, I don't know. I don't feel like doing it or I don't feel like doing it. I'll, if you have a coach who you I've check in with, that, that can helps. work. What I've taught yep. myself to say when I, when I say I don't feel like it and teach my students yep. is, just what the hell does that have to do with it? So what if you don't feel like it? Do it anyway. Right. Okay? Right. And well, because it's called work for a reason. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, we like what I like what I do. I know you like what you do. Yeah. I mean, we love what we do. Right. And there's sometimes where we would like to hike more. Mm -hmm. And I do. Um, and I'm so looking forward to it this weekend because I haven't been this year. Um, but the same kind of thing, right? All right. So um, for me... I call them daily revenue generating rituals, and mm -hmm. I'll just give you a few. After that, but I but I want you to I want you to take that tip with you, 
the next time you catch yourself thinking or saying, I don't feel like it, and I bet you you'll be able to practice this before you're headed to pillow tonight, because it happens to all of us, is ask mm -hmm. yourself, just what the hell does that have to do with it? And do it anyway. Now, anyway. tell them quickly, Felicia, before I talk about the DRGRs, the, um, the strategy for asking questions here. Um, and I'm pointing to the box on my screen. Oh, on, on, yeah, on, on web. web. All right. So if you've got a question, um, all you got to do is in the message thing, type forward slash and then the number Q. And actually, if you type forward slash, Blab now brings it up. I'm looking at it. And you can hit, um, like, it'll say ask a question. It's the first thing that comes up. So you go forward slash and then you can go Q. And then you can ask your question cool. like this. And then, and look, boom, geez, it appears over on the left-hand side. Look that at that. That helps so much, folks, when the, when the stream is moving along and people are commenting what you want you to do uh, to catch the questions because it's a big blue queue here. And, ladies and gentlemen, special announcement. Alan Richards, all the way from the UK, has just joined us. Okay? One of my students over Hi, there Alan. across the pond who is um, killing it with the custom content wizard. Um, he was like, he was on the, uh, the Facebook group today, like stunned by the results he'd gotten from one article and then turning it into a video. So way to go. I'm going to give you some props here. That's fantastic. Maybe come on later and, and we'll give you some clap. Um, anyway, um, DRGRs, okay? Daily revenue generate, don't shake your head at me. Daily revenue <laughs> generating so. rituals, okay? Now, the first thing I do every day, before I, way before I check email. Because if you check email every day first thing in the morning, stop that as of right now because that's beginning your day based on someone else's agenda. Why do that? Start your day based on your own agenda. Now, it probably will not come as a surprise that the first thing I do every day is create some kind of content. Okay? That can be everything from a tiny little tweet, Facebook update, all the way to a blog post, an article, a video, email, something for a court. Uh, what that does it consistently is keeps the new people coming in and keeps the profits coming in, okay? But only because I do the second thing I do every day, which is ship that content to put it in Seth Godin world, okay? I publish it somewhere, okay? A lot of people, I've actually had them create content and then not do anything with it. It's like, uh, you got to send it somewhere, otherwise it's not helping anybody. Sitting in your That's computer. crazy. Isn't it crazy? But people do it. That is crazy. Okay? I know. I'm, and I'm going to share five of these. The third one I do is every day I make an offer somewhere in my list, okay, to a different segmented group. Now, it's not to the whole list. You don't bang your list every day with an offer. But somebody, either in my internet marketing list, my relationships list, or other lists, is going to get an offer that day, okay? So that's consistent income. And the other two things I do uh, that, that not very many people do as I talk to is, one, I reach out to uh, a current affiliate partner every day in some way. It might be you and I just chatting on Facebook about something, okay? Yeah. Or it might be um, nurturing another relationship that um, I've done partnerships with. And then the fifth thing I do is I reach out every day to a new potential affiliate partner, somebody to work with. I have um, my team hunting for people that are, you know, in this realm. And doing mm -hmm. just those five things every day brings in so much good stuff so mm -hmm. that on those days when I don't feel like it, okay, when I don't want to, not only do I tell myself, what the hell does that guy do with it? I think of the good stuff that comes mm -hmm. in as a result of that. So, makes sense? Yeah, it does make sense. I think it's fantastic. Um, and you're, you're talking about the whole notion of consistency earlier, and I had a thought I wanted to, to add here. I was having a conversation okay. recently with our buddy Joel Kahn, and he said something really interesting about platforms so that anybody with all these different platforms out there and there's remember when mm -hmm. we first came on you know back in 07 mm -hmm. there was email and there were websites and there were teleseminars right and yeah now you got all these ways to build a platform including what you're on right now right and i'm loving mm -hmm. this one the many video stuff um mike stewart and i are putting a product together about how to use all these different ones they're so much fun um so anyway uh, what Joel said was that anybody can build a following with consistent content. That's okay. true. Yeah, exactly. It's true. Okay. But think mm -hmm. about everybody that's here live, everybody that's listening to the recording, everybody that's reading this as a, a Kindle book or a blog post or whatever the thousands of ways we repurpose this. Think about that. Any one of you can build a platform 
in, in various places. Pick one and concentrate there and then build out from there by consistently putting out good content. Mm -hmm. um, that levels the playing field and ought to excite you about what you can do. If that yeah. excites you, give us some, what do you call these things here? Claps. Claps. Yeah. Point to the other side. The other side? Okay. Right yeah, there here. You go. Wait a minute, right here. There, stop. There you go. Okay. That's it. Okay. Can I move now, or do I got to stay yes. on this all time? You can, you can, you can do it on any anywhere on the screen. I can type. Look, I'm right on your nose. Ding, 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 right. ding, ding, right. ding. There we go. There we go. Okay. Thank, Thank you for all those so, folks. Now, don't don't leave Felicia just because I said it. Give her some too. That's okay. Um, but that whole notion of consistency—that if you don't take anything else away from this, take this. Consistency is mm -hmm. over to you, ma'am. Yeah, I mean uh, that's. If you want to be profitable, you've got to do the things that lead to profitability. That's really what it boils down to. And I like that. I like I like the simplicity of that statement. If you want it, to be profitable, you got to do the things to be profitable. Yeah, I, I mean that's it. It's as simple as that, and and for many people, as challenging as that, because uh, I mean, even even right now, I'm filling holes in my business. And I think we all have holes that we can fill. And, you know, the bigger the holes, the more money's falling through those cracks, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to fill those as tightly as you can um, and as quickly as you can. And because when I started building my business, I didn't know what I was doing. I just started doing stuff. Mm -hmm. And just kept doing things and kept doing things and kind of figured it out as I went along and had good mentors along the way like you and and um, worked with some really great people. And, you know, I would get one area kind of shored up and figure that out. And then you I get another area way. shored up and you were very figure that there. out. Yeah. But then in the meantime, you know, like I was still like shoring up one thing and then trying out a bunch of other little things. So that's where all these holes kind of came from. And so now I'm in the process of like backfilling. Like, let's go. Oh, look, I have sure. an autoresponder series with three emails in it. Yeah, that's not enough. Yeah, you know. So, like, looking at where are all those things and filling that again with content. And that's really it's, huge, folks. I want you to really catch what Felicia just said. Even folks at our level who are doing well with this, okay, go back and look for the holes because they're there. Because when you're moving at the speed of every day take an action mm -hmm. sometimes you go past something or you don't know something yet and, and it's important to go back and and fill in those gaps and fill in those holes I had a, another I, I don't know what was going on with me all these interesting thoughts while watching my kid get this award this morning but um you know they were dismissing for class right and mm -hmm. if anybody else has ever had this feeling um you know hit on the 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 hearts i mean the, the claps right here um I had this notion as they were going back to class. There was a part of me that thought, ah, man, they got it made. They got six classes all set up. They know exactly where to go. They know exactly what to do. And they got it all laid out for them. Mm -hmm. And ah, wouldn't that be nice? If it's a life like that. And then they look at our lives, yeah. right? And, and they, they go, yeah. Oh, they can do whatever they want, yeah. whenever they want. Yeah. They don't have to get up, and they don't have teachers telling them what to do. Exactly. And so, and so, my thought was crazy. Notion was, well, wait a minute, Jeff. You can set up your day any day, any way you want to. So, well, I, you know what? I'm going to try and this ne next week. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try one day, and I'm going to set it up by hour periods, just like school. And I'm going to mm -hmm. do this in this class, and then this in this class. This, this class and I'm going to go have PE and then I'm going to do this in this class and then I'm going to have lunch and then a recess. Yeah. Recess. And then uh, instead of like all day and then a couple more classes and I'm just going to see how that goes, you know, cause I thought okay. that's a nice discipline strategy and um, consistency strategy. Yeah, it is a nice discipline strategy. And I don't think you're going to need that many classes. I'm just going to say, <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> Hopefully. But I mean, the, well, that's the truth is, I mean, you know, you and I have each been doing this for about 10 years now. Um, and after you get the things in place that need to be in place, at that point, it's a matter of tweaking and, you know, adding some things that you want to add. But, um, you know, all of the 16 hour days, 
they don't have to be anymore. I mean, unless you want to, unless you want to, you know, you love to write or you love to whatever it is, obviously you can do that, right. but um, you don't have to, you know, I mean, that's the, that's the interesting part of it. So I think if you figure out for yourself, like where your, um, your daily rituals, like, you know, I'm going to do those daily rituals between nine and 11. Right. And, you know, and maybe instead of an hour long period, you do them for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever. Right. I think that's a really great um, business lifestyle to test for yourself and see if it'll work out. Tim saying my problem is staying focused on getting one thing profitable before moving on to something else. OK. Um, Tim, remember the clock we talked about and the results now insider circle that you start at 12 o'clock. OK. And 12 o'clock, to six o'clock is the idea the creativity oh, we could do this and it'll do that and we could also do this and you know the stuff you and i get excited about when we talk Alicia. and and mm -hmm. so what happens is a lot of people will do maybe this is the right, the right side of the clock from 12 o'clock to six o'clock okay is all that exciting stuff and what happens with a lot of people is they get to six o'clock and they don't continue they go back up to 12 o'clock and get another idea and go oh we'll do this and we'll do that and, oh how come blah, 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 blah. they come down here so right. The Maybe they buy a URL in the middle. Yeah, somewhere in there. Might be, and, and, and feel like they've accomplished something because they bought a URL. Well, you just made okay. GoDaddy some money, okay, or whoever right. some money, um, but you didn't make yourself some money. The, the trip from 6 o'clock back to 12 o'clock is the implementation side. Okay? Mm -hmm. Step one, step two, step three, step 3A. Three okay? And the thing I try to discipline myself to do and teach my students is, Got a new idea? Great. Enjoy this and all the excitement and stuff, and then build it out to money in the bank up at 12 yep. o'clock before you go do anything else. And, you know, using that analogy, I would say even like a lot of times, and this is this is this has been true for me, and this is what I'm going back and refilling, is I would get myself to like, um, you know, all the way around to the nine or even the 10 or the 11. Oh, close. A five yard but, line. Well, I, well, I would make it. Yeah. I would. I would be making money. You know, like from six until you know, from the six to twelve again. I'm making money, but I would. I would skip that last two clicks worth of money. Right. Because I've I got another idea and I'm back at noon already. Yeah. You know, I'm back back at twelve again. Yeah. And so I'm going back. That's that's part of my backfilling that I'm oh, doing. I'm going is back and filling. It let in me. Ten o'clock. Yeah. To let me. Because I created all this stuff that's just sitting there, not doing anything for me. You know, there's not. I don't have like the. I don't have a, a lot of um like the rebroadcast stuff set up right. or you know like the click funnels things and I mean I have a lot of things that I've done and a lot of things that are in place and um, but there's these pieces that it's like yeah but now there's a new thing I want to do that because that's really more exciting so that for me going back and saying all right what did I yeah repurposing absolutely makes you a ton of money Tim that's that's the to me like that's the part between like the nine and the ten and the twelve like you yeah you can make like you can make the first burst of money between the six and the nine. You know, you get the idea and you plan it all out. You buy the URL and you, you know, you do all of the work you need to do to before you make the money, set up the sales page. But then you promote it at six, six to nine to ten. You do the thing. You have fun doing the thing because let's just let's let's be honest. It's fun to make money. Well, like I like that. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a good day, right? When you can have that. And then, because it's so fun and addicting, you go, let's do that again. Well, I do anyway. Let's do that again. And I start back at 12 as opposed to then going, okay, that was fun. Now, I have this thing. What else am I going to do with it right. to serve more people with it and help me make more money and help them make more money? Right. I love that. And so that's where I'm going back is repurposing not just the free content, but repurposing paid content to make sure that I continue to get paid on that past content. So for me, that's what I've been like. That's the side of my business that needs to uh, exercise a little. We'll say. I like that. <laughs> uh, nice analogy. Brent would like that. Um, and so Felicia and I began this conversation a couple of weeks ago, wondering, mm -hmm. does a business have a lifestyle? I think we've established that in fact it does. Mm -hmm. The next step is, is is it a profitable lifestyle? And so what we've been talking about is how to make that lifestyle profitable. So um, mm -hmm. I think we've established that we've got a pretty good idea here. Now, a few minutes ago, 
Um, oh, wait, wait a minute. Alan's got a question here. So to get where you are today, did you decide that this would be your goal or did it come from a continuing extension of the things you were already doing? Wow, interesting question. Um, when you first start out, at least for me, when I first started out, Alan, it wasn't like I, I saw where I started here and where I wanted to go over here. You know, it was more, it was kind of like driving on a dark country road at night, okay? And your headlights give you from here to here, okay? Yeah. And what a lot of people do is they stop and they go, well, I can't see the whole way. I'll stop, okay? And what you do is you just go with those headlights and, and it illuminates more and illuminates more and illuminates more. So, Alan, you don't have to have the whole big picture, okay? I would say do the next logical thing, okay? Mm -hmm. If you don't have a product yet, start thinking about that. If you don't have a list yet, the very first thing you do is start building that list community, building that community to serve. Oh, uh, okay? I cannot tell you how many people. That I'm, <laughs> I'm going, going right to. now. <laughs> I am so, this ticks me off more than anything. Like, people, I'm... People who are my own clients, people I have known for years. Yes. How many people do you have on your list? How, are you building it? And and it's not about the size of the list. All right. So no, not we're not fair. not talking about that. Right. We're talking about. But you have to have a list. You have yeah. to have people that you can send stuff to that want to hear from you. Why? I mean, you know, there was um, there was a study done. And I'm going to forget who it was that talks about having a thousand true fans. And um, a past business partner and I, who's law, has actually passed away now, he used to talk about a thousand true fans. And if you have a thousand people who live and breathe on everything that you say and they love it and they love you, what that does is it allows you to expand your business exponentially because now you've got a thousand people who, who are into you, who love your stuff, who are going to preach about you to their people who are like them, who could benefit from you. Now, I'm not saying you have to have a list of a thousand to make any money. Don't please do not mis misrepresent my words. But I'm saying a thousand true fans, wherever they happen to be, maybe some of them are on Facebook, some of them are on Twitter, some of them are on LinkedIn, some of them are on, on your own list. And I, in a perfect world, you call them all on your own list because you don't own those other places. You own your own list. But you've got to be building that list of uh, people yeah. to build. And and by the way, not everybody on your list is going to be one of those thousand true fans. There, right. you know, there's different there's different right. you know levels of 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 loving and and um, and subscribers. There's the subscribers who you know they subscribe because they want to get the free thing and they don't pay attention to anything else. They might as well not even be subscribed, right? right? Then there's the subscribers who open maybe every third, fourth, or fifth message. Then there, then there are the there are your true fans that open just about every message, and they respond to you, and they they show up to your stuff. And purchase everything and, you come up with. Yes, they purchase everything or almost everything you come up with, and that's what you want to look at developing. Absolutely. And the relationship with those people, and they will point you in the direction. When you can't see the headlights from here to here, the, the people, those thousand true fans or 10 or however many that you're at right this minute today, those are the people that are going to get you and they're going to say, okay, this is what I want to see next yes. from you. I just, and you go, okay. I just did that because I, I went to my group and said, okay, what do you want to know? What do you want me to help you with next? And um, I listed five things thinking it would be number one or number two. It was number five. It was all about repurposing something that I taught five years ago, but they want to know yep. about it today. So absolutely yeah. right what you said. And I want to underscore something that you said about a thousand true fans. Think about that. I'd rather have a thousand true fans, and that's all. I have a list of a thousand, and every one of them be a true fan, than a list of yeah. 10,000, 20,000, 100,000, 500,000 that weren't true fans. Because you can mm -hmm. do really, really well and serve those 1,000 people really well and then they help mm -hmm. now those of you that are gulping at that number 1,000 true fans okay um, see what that number let's see if I can do this right gulping because it's low or gulping because it's high it's so it's so relative well, it you really know? is okay so here it is a thousand okay okay so those of you that are gulping at that start with one right and then go to ten mm -hmm. and once you get to ten the notion of a hundred seems much more likely. And once you get to a hundred, the notion of a thousand, okay, maybe that's reasonable, reachable. Okay. So mm -hmm. start where you are. Okay. 
Don't start with, okay, I got to get my thousand today. You're going to go to bed and right. avoid it. Okay? Get one. Then get another one. Get one. Get one. Mm-hmm. All right. So earlier mm-hmm. on our show here, um, Alan, um, from, Alan Richards from the UK showed up. And Alan, if you're still on and are willing to come on, I, I'd like to celebrate a little bit what you just accomplished. Um, so um, click on there. Join us. I here. don't see I don't see anybody in the UK. If you look at the map, there's oh, really? nobody and here. You from know there. anymore. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, then never yeah, mind. you may have dropped. Okay, so we're going to start wrapping up this show here, folks. Um, if you'd like to come on and give your um, give your input, feel free to do so. And if you got a question mm-hmm. for us, do that too. Uh, otherwise, I think we've established that, yes, your business has a lifestyle. Next question is, is it profitable? And here are the tips to make mm-hmm. it profitable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you did a good job with that, Jeff. Well, yeah, well you. thank you, and yay yeah, you for being a great guest. And I think we have something here. Now, for those of you in repurposing world, one of the, the clear ways this will be repurposed, since Jeff finally remembered to hit record, hit the record button. Over here. Woo-hoo! This is the fourth one of these I've done, and I finally now remember. Um, so funny. Uh, it, it, it's funny because I do it all the time on everything else. It just was a block. But this this will easily become a, a, a Kindle book. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, get it transcribed, da 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 da, you know, and boom, there you go. So, um, another way to make your business lifestyle profitable, folks. All right. So, Felicia, mm-hmm. thank you for hanging out with us. And, uh, oh, thanks, Georgia. What'd she say? She uh, says, We love you both. Definitely one of your thousand. Oh, thank you. Made my day. Thanks, and Martin. Here's Martin. Good to see you here, buddy. Another a fellow you. dad. I like that. Mm-hmm. Mr. Wonderful I joined. That. I wonder if that's Niall. That's what they call their um, youngest son. But uh, I never seen him come in under that. Anyway, all right. So, we're going to wrap up here, folks. Thank you for being with us. Felicia, thank you. Awesome. Um, thanks we'll for having me next week. And, uh, in the meantime, go use this stuff because it flat out works. Catch you next time. Bye.